and welcome. I just wanted to show everybody a quick way to shrink your photos. Nowadays a lot of people have high-end digital cameras that are producing beautiful photos but they're huge and for print purposes the bigger the better. So if you have a camera that has uh, 10 megapixels or even more uh, good for you except when it's on the web instead of having a resolution that might be as high as 1400 dots per inch uh, which is a very high resolution now we're talking something more like 72 dots per inch which is the web standard it's much smaller uh, much faster to load so that's why uh, we say that we don't want anybody uploading a picture that's more than a megabyte. Our system will crunch it from there, but you don't want to have these large photos. It slows down the web and it's also harder to upload. So here's a quick tip on how to get it changed. And what I found is this right here, photoflexer.com. It's F-O-T-O-F-L-L. -O F-L-E-X-E-R dot com. This is a free website that you can go to and you can resize and make some basic edits on your photos from here. So you click upload and it's going to have you pick the picture. So we're going to assume that you can find your pictures somewhere on your hard drive. Um, I generally keep them in pictures and I'm going to make these smaller so I can find them a little faster. Let's go to fantastic jumps and I'm gonna scroll down and pick a castle here so um, I don't know if you saw that it's 1.21 megabytes so it's a little bit too big for our system not hideous but certainly bigger than anybody would ever need on a website uh, you can also right click and go to properties if you don't know if your images are too big but we're gonna go ahead and click on open for this and that's gonna upload it to their website so that we can edit it and then it's going to let us save it back down in this new size when we're done. Alright so now uh, to start with on something like this I would probably use the crop tool and um, let's see it says right click for more options but I'm just gonna draw a little box here just holding down the left mouse button and bring that up to the top and then crop selected area so already we've got a better picture coming along and if you want to be able to cut out the background you're gonna need some stronger photo editing stuff so I'll cover Photoshop elements and Photoshop in another video but to get something up and running this works pretty well and um, there's even some really cool little effects you can add if you want to add um, you know different effects you can decorate it with stickers you can add text which is a good way to make your category titles you could add a big text thing over this you can draw on them you can erase so all sorts of stuff you can add little animations so I'm gonna let you go through there and and uh, mess with it as as you see fit it looks like they might be able to do a cutout here uh, so that might be worth uh, checking out so let's just go back and try to resize our image. So I'm going to click on resize here and as you can see I've got something that's 1400 pixels. Well that's wider than the entire screen on a website. So let's go look at some of their preset sizes and see if we can get something that makes some sense. So let's say that we want to get it down to a decent size it's still bigger than you might even want to use uh, 640 by 480 is going to take uh, the majority of a screen so let's let's start with that that'll get the file size down under control and say apply you do want to make sure that you keep your proportions otherwise you're going to stretch your image now we say save and let's see we're gonna click save up here save to my computer and it says JPEG best for most computers 
and it does look like you can do a transparency so I'll see if I can come back and figure that out and do a little cutout for you guys but for right now let's save it as a JPEG and say save to my computer and it says photo flexor photo I'm gonna call it castle and click save and it's gonna ask me where I want to put it I'm gonna put it on the desktop for right now just so I can find it real easily and that should be it so now if I go to my desktop thing uh, thumbnail here click on properties and we're gonna check out the file size and look at that it went from 1.2 megabytes down to 180 K so it's a thousand K makes a megabyte so we went from a thousand down to hundred and eighty and then some people say oh but that's that's gonna be too small well let me double click on this and you can see how big that is uh, in our little viewer here so that's a pretty sizable photo and it's a fifth of the size that it started in fact I think it's closer to a sixth of the size that it started so photoflexor.com check it out I'll be making some more videos on cutting out these images in the near future hey just a quick amendment since I did see this uh, uh, this transparency aspect while I was showing this uh, last part on sizing I thought I'd give you a quick update I, I've played around with it it's not going to be good for cutting out complex backgrounds but if you have a simple background like this that you found on the web and you want to make this transparent so that your uh, site colors shine through then this might be a good way to go so you go to geek and then smart cutout and uh, gives you a little thing and you can zoom in on it which I do recommend and essentially what you're doing is just defining what you want to keep and what you want to delete so for the delete we're going to and you can change the brush size um, it does a pretty good job of predicting what you want to get rid of oh, undo that last little bit you do have to keep it off of the unit um, so I'm gonna just kinda trace around a little bit it doesn't need you to do every single last bit of it it's gonna predict what you're trying to get rid of so we're gonna try to get rid of all this white background here by just drawing some lines around it and we'll do it down here and do a quick kind of trace of the item and you can zoom in or out you can change the brush size um, I'm gonna say keep and I'm gonna make the brush size a little bit bigger and I'm gonna go ahead and draw a quick green it does this automatically so the delete it's gonna show up as red keep shows up as green and uh, you don't have to be terribly precise I did this last time it seemed to work <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna come over here and do some more tracing over here so that it knows that we're trying to keep the whole thing and say we want that too and then you just click on predict unknown areas and let's see how well it works on this one and there you go so it did a pretty nice job of cutting out the unit for us these little checker marks back here uh, indicate that it's a transparent background now so now we can save it make sure that um, when you save something like that you save it as a PNG which is one of their uh, options and that'll keep that transparency for you so there's the updated tip. If you need to do a complex background, check out the next training video on Photoshop Elements or Photoshop. But for a basic background cutout, I think this is a pretty good way to do it, and it's free. We'll see you next time.